Uh, so welcome to uh, the Construction and Trades Virtual Series. Uh, today we are going to be interviewing uh, the Iron Worker Apprenticeship uh, Coordinator, Rich Gamblin, and a uh, second year apprentice. Uh, his name is uh, Micah Kreider. Um, so just a little bit about the program. Uh, for those of you that are joining us, we're going to go ahead and take all questions via the chat feature. So as this program goes along and you come up and, and you have a question, uh, just, just type it in the chat uh, feature and I'll monitor, monitor that. And uh, during the presentation, I will ask those questions of either our apprentice that is joining us or our apprenticeship coordinator. Uh, so again, my name is Kevin Comerford. I'm with the Construction Advancement Foundation of Northwest Indiana. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the Construction Advancement Foundation, we're a uh, contractor trade association that is regional. Uh, we are located or our members are located in uh, seven counties here in Northwest Indiana. Uh, one of our big um, tenants of what we do is workforce development. So uh, uh, this is kind of where this is stemmed from is uh, from our workforce development committee. Uh, I want to, uh, thank the Center of Workforce Innovations along with the Northwest Indiana Workforce Board uh, for helping us uh, sponsor this program and get the communications into all the regional schools. Uh, without their help, uh, this would be uh, virtually impossible. I also wanna thank the iron workers for their participation. So um, on the welcome screen, you can see the contact information here for uh, the iron workers. Uh, if you have any questions, I, I recommend that you either go to their website, which is located on this welcome screen, or uh, call the phone number provided there for you. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop sharing the screen, and I'm going to kind of just go straight into um, uh, the interview. And um, my first question is going to be for Rich Gamblin, who's the apprenticeship coordinator for the iron workers. Rich, uh, I mean, I'm in the business, so I kind of know what it is, but a lot of people might not understand what an iron worker does on a daily basis. Can you talk a little bit about what an iron worker is and what, what kind of work that you do? Sure, Kevin. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. And um, so a little bit about it being an iron worker. Uh, it depends on the area that you live in, usually. Uh, we live here on the south end of uh, Lake Michigan where there's a lot of industry. So in, in, uh, in our area, most of our work is in the steel mills and refineries and powerhouses and stuff like that. So we deal with a lot of the steel structures uh, and maintain uh, the, the steel mills and refineries and such. Uh, they're old, the steel mills are over 100 years old, the refineries that old, and we, we go in and we maintain the, uh, the structural steel, usually the machinery, um, and we also put additions on. Uh, mo most of the uh, work of the iron workers is dealing with steel, erection, welding, uh, or um, fabrication, and, and things of that uh, sort. And um, outside the, uh, the big industry, we build the schools, the bridges, and uh, roadways. When you see uh, reinforcing steel in the roadways, that's iron workers. Um, when you drive down the road and you see a new uh, school going up, all the steel sticking up, that's iron workers. Uh, so basically what I like to tell people that have no idea what an iron worker does is uh, most people know what a carpenter does. They build things with wood. Uh, well, if you replace that with steel, that's what an iron worker does. So when you, when you talk about structural steel, what is the point of having steel inside? I assume you mean just like uh, rebar uh, that is inside concrete. What is the purpose to, you know, why does things need to be reinforced with, with steel? Well, a lot of the uh, of concrete is used for um, manufacturing and uh, roadways and things where, where uh, it needs to be reinforced. Concrete is uh, strong in compression, but it's weak in tensile, so it'll crack easily and separate. That's why you put reinforcing steel in concrete. Now, even things like sidewalks will have reinforcing steel, but that'll be in the form of wire mesh. Uh, as you get into the heavier industry, it's more, uh, more rebar. And then as you get into big structures, it's, uh, it's, a really, it's really heavy rebar that's in there. Okay. 
Now let's switch directions a little bit and let's talk about the apprenticeship program. Uh, like all trades, the iron workers have an apprenticeship program. Uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how long the program uh, lasts, you know, from once you get in and, uh, you know, just basically how is the program structured? Okay, so we have a four year apprenticeship program. Um, typically, we, we go to school one day a week, 11 months out of the year, and, uh, and you'll, you're able to work the other five to, to six days a week, and, uh, and you'll basically earn as you learn. So um, you'll come here one day a week, like I said, for 11 months, and then every year you'll move up to the next year. Um, every six months, you, you move to a different pay scale. Uh, we, we move along pretty fast here. There's a lot of curriculum that, ha that gets covered, especially in the first two years. And then the last couple of years, you're, you're spending most of your time out in the shop, getting a lot of weld certs and, and, and brushing up on your skills. So when you become a journeyman, you really can just take off and go. I mean, you're trained and ready to go. What kind of, uh, what kind of math is involved to become an iron worker? I mean, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people are hesitant to get in the trades because they think there's, you know, it's so focused heavily on math. Uh, what kind of math is needed to get into the iron workers? Uh, ba it's basic math. Um, most of our math revolves around being able to read a tape measure and lay out things. So basic math, uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, decimals and fractions, that's what you need to know how to do. Uh, we'll teach you the rest. If you know your basic math, we'll teach you how to do everything else. We're not looking for somebody coming in here that are that mathematician. We want you to have the basic skills that you get through high school, and, uh, and we're going to teach you the rest on, on on the type of work we do and what you'll need. So, so can you talk a little bit about your applications when you accept applications, and uh, basically, how do you get into the program? Okay, so typically on a normal year, we take applications the first two weeks of January every year. Uh, unfortunately, this year due to COVID, we did not accept any applications. So we're skipping a year, um, but typically we, we, we take applications for two weeks out of the year. We take them in person only at our uh, school in Lake Station. Um, and then after that, we'll set everybody that fills out an application gets to take an aptitude test. And everybody that passes the aptitude test will get an oral interview. And then after the oral, oral interview, then uh, the uh, JATC board will select how many people are coming into the, the next class? So besides um, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, decimals, whole numbers, what else can uh, a student uh, expect when taking the aptitude test? The aptitude test is, is uh, a lot of what you just described and uh, basic mechanical knowledge. Uh, we're not looking for anybody with a mechanical engineering degree, but uh, it's a mechanical aptitude test just to see how you think. If you look at a picture, can you tell, for instance, if you looked at two gears and one of them had 24 gears and one of them had 12 gears, and if one of them spins one time, how many times will the other one spin? Something like that. Just a, a, a basic mechanical aptitude along with the math. So, so once you um, take the general aptitude test, Next step is uh, if you pass that, then you get a an interview. That is correct. And what's that interview process like? Are you just are they interviewing with you, or is there a, a team of people that they that the apprentice or the uh, applicant has to interview with? Yes, there's the uh, joint apprentice uh, training board. They do all the interviewing. Um, they'll come in. They have a series of questions that they ask all the students the same questions. And then from there, it spurs more conversation. Um, they're going to want to look at uh, your, your high school transcripts, your grades from high school. Um, they're looking at your uh, references that you've submitted. And uh, they're going to ask you a few questions on where you worked before, what kind of work habits you have. And, um, and then they're going to go from there and then and for a conversation and, uh, and just to see what kind of applicant you would be. 
So then after you take the aptitude test and successfully pass the, uh, the interview, are you an iron worker or do you have to like take any kind of physical or is there, um, is there any more steps, drug testing, or is there anything else that you'd have to take before you get actually accepted into the program? Yeah, good question. So yes, um, after you went, went through the interview and you've been selected, you're tentatively selected. And then you have to go do a, a, a physical that we, uh, that's performed at an off, uh, a third party clinic You'll go there, you'll take a physical, and uh, this is uh, some, some of the things they do in the physical is some of the things you'd be doing at work. Like, for instance, one of the items they have you do there is pick up a 50 pound can of welding rods and take it up the stairs, because you're going to be doing that on a job. You're going to have to carry it up the stairs, and they make you do that a couple of times. They make you pull up uh, some welding leads from the ground up to the second story walk up a ladder, things like that, just to see that you're physically fit and you can do the, the, the job. Um, also, this physical, it'll also tell you if you have uh, some deficiencies in, in, we've had some guys that had heart problems that never knew they had heart problems until they took this physical. And, uh, and then, you know, they went on to get it corrected or whatever. And, uh, and uh, it was a good thing that they did the physical. Now, how about drug testing? Uh, I know most of the trades do some sort of drug testing program. Do the iron workers do any type of drug testing? Yeah, most of the trades are all in the BCRC, which is our drug testing uh, uh, leg of the industry. And uh, so you'll, you'll be uh, joining the BCRC and you get sent, uh, you'll have to take a, an initial test to get in. And then after that, you're in a, a pool of people and you get random tests could come at any time. So earlier when uh, you were talking about the apprenticeship program and how it was structured, you were talking about how this is an earn while you learn. Uh, talk a little bit about how you earn a paycheck while going through the program. Um, as you go through the program, you know, how does your pay increase as, as you uh, progress? About, you know, that process. And sure. uh, so this is an earn while you learn like most apprenticeships. Um, so we talked about how you're going to come to school one day a week, but then, but then after you're uh, done with your school day, uh, you're available to go to work. And me as a coordinator, I'll send you to jobs as I get the phone calls. Uh, the, the, the contractors call me and say, hey, I need two apprentices starting tomorrow or then whatever day they need them. And then I, I send out the apprentices to the jobs. Now, they can go on a job. Let's like let's use the Gary Casino for uh, an example. That's a long-term job. They go out there. They're working 40 hours a week. On Tuesdays, your school day. Well, they just go to school instead of work on that one day. So, so, so basically, you're you're earning a paycheck, and you're going to school, and 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 everybody's happy because uh, you you get paid pretty decent as an apprentice, as an iron worker apprentice. You get paid pretty decent. You have good benefits. And, uh, and as you go through the school, it just keeps increasing. Every six months, you'll get a 5% raise until you reach 90% of scale. And then uh, you stay at 90% for your last year until you become a journeyman. Um, but you, you make a pretty decent living. You, you have good benefits and you're, and you're learning as you go. So once you become a journeyman, and I know other trades offer this, um, a lot of apprentices are awarded a basically an associate's degree from Ivy Tech Community College. Uh, do the iron workers participate in that program? Yes, we do. So that is uh, mandatory in our program to uh, not only do you take all the iron worker classes, which a lot of them transfer to Ivy Tech credits, but we have an academic coordinator here that uh, teaches you four additional classes that will earn you an associate's degree through uh, Ivy Tech. So how can somebody prepare? You know, this is gonna be watched by a lot of high school students. So if somebody, if, if a young man or a young woman is in high school right now and they're interested in becoming a, uh, an iron worker, is there anything that they could do while they're in school right now to um, help make their chances a little bit better of, you know, get accepted into the iron worker program? Sure. Uh, so 
Well, we talked about the math. Um, so as, as long as you're, you're strong in math or at least average in math, you should be okay. But if, if you're in a high school that has any building trades, sh uh, shop classes, you probably should uh, get involved in that. That'll give you some hands-on experience uh, and an idea how to, how to use a tape measure and some, some basic tools that, that you would use in the construction industry. Um, uh, another thing is get a job, get a part-time job, uh, go to work on time every day, and then use that person for a reference. Uh, that's always a good reference when you have uh, a, your, your ex-employer writes you a good reference letter because that shows that you're a good employee and that's what we're looking for. So punctuality and responsibility, I guess you could chalk up to is some of the characteristics that you look for. Are there any other characteristics that uh, would make a good iron worker? Yeah, we're looking for an all around good attitude. Uh, now we've already talked about punctuality. Uh, we, we, we want people that's gonna show up every day on time with a great attitude, willing to learn. Uh, like I said before, we're gonna teach you what you need to know here. Some people think you gotta know how to weld to come to the iron workers. No, you don't. We'll teach you how to weld. Because a lot of people come here, they think they know how to weld until we really show them how. Uh, so come here with, with, uh, with a good uh, um, attitude and willing to learn. And we're going to teach you everything you need to know to be a successful iron worker. What, what kind of welding do uh, iron workers learn in, inside the apprenticeship school? Is it uh, stick? Is it tag, meg? What do you guys learn? So primarily in our, in our area, uh, we do mostly stick welding. So that's where we start. We're going to get you a few uh, uh, certs in stick welding, and then we're going to move you on to uh, flux core welding, which is wire welding. And, uh, and we're going to get you some certs in that. And, and when you go through the welding uh, here, you go at your own pace. Some people pick it up a little quicker than others. The, the quicker you pick it up, the further we move you ahead. And uh, we're going to get you as many welding searches as you can possibly get in the four years that you're here in our program. You're, a, you're working for contractors. Um, I mean, it's possible that you could work for, for five, maybe 10 different contractors in one year, depending on where the work is. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, how an iron worker goes um, working for a contractor or that many contractors in one year? Okay, so that's a good point, Kevin. Uh, construction the industry isn't for everybody. Uh, this is a uh, this is more of an opportunity than it is a uh, a full time forty hour go to the same place type job. Um, you go to work for a contractor. When there's a job, they hire people. Now, I, well, another thing I like to tell people: uh, the building that you're sitting in, one day they started that building, and one day they finished that building. So the construction workers showed up, did their job, and when it was all done. They, they left and went to the next job. So this is uh, uh, always evolving. You're always changing uh, uh, sp spots to work and uh, you're doing different things. But uh, the, the bad news is one week you may have tons of hours and the next week you might not have any because that's just the way it goes. So, so you'll work for several different contractors. If you hire in on a Monday and it's a three day job, then you'll get laid off and you might go back on Friday for a different contractor to a different location. So you're constantly moving around, doing different things, working for different people. And at the end of the year, you have to gather up all your, uh, your uh, figure out who you all work for before you do your taxes, because you've worked for several people. I've probably worked most in one year, maybe 15 different contractors in one year. But at the end, all your, all your benefits and everything go to the same spot. So your insurance and your pensions and all that, they're all in the same area. You don't have to track those down later in your, in your uh, career. Uh, it's just that the, you do work for several different contractors, as you said. So it sounds like one day you could be working at, like you said, the uh, Gary Casino, and maybe the next day you might be on a job over at, uh, you know, the power generating station down in Wheatfield. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the importance of, transportation um do you check for like making sure that your apprentices have valid driver's licenses or uh that they have a reliable vehicle because i think it's almost required in order to do to do the job is it not yeah actually those are a couple of the questions in the interview uh and and also 
but to fill out an application here at our school, you have to show a driver's license. Every step of the way, you show the driver's license. You show it when you fill out the application, you show it when you do the test, you show it. The first question in the interview is, do you have a driver's license? And then show it. So yes, you have to have a valid driver's license. You have to have reliable transportation because as we all know, there isn't, this isn't Chicago where there's bus service where you can get anywhere you wanna go. And as you just stated, you may be working in two different counties in two different days. So yes, you have to have those things in order to be an iron worker in this area anyway. Um, I, I just can't stress the importance of, uh, of, of that because we talked about earlier being at work every day on time. So if you don't have reliable transportation, that, that just can't happen. Hey, I'm gonna switch directions a little bit here and uh, go ahead and talk to, uh, to uh, Micah Kreider. Micah is a uh, second year apprentice, went to uh, Lake Central High School. And uh, like I said, he's now in his second year at the Iron Worker Apprenticeship. Uh, Micah, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So it looks like, uh, are you at school right now or are you on the job site? Uh, I'm currently, I'm at school in one of the shops that we have. Okay, I might, I might ask, are you on a, on, are you on a mobile device or are you on a laptop right now? I'm on a Chromebook. Okay, so do you have the ability to maybe walk around later on and, and show people? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, before I uh, have you do that, I, I want to talk a little bit about your background. Can you talk a little bit about... Um, um, you know, what you were doing after high school and until you got into the iron workers and, and how'd you hear about the iron workers? Um, yeah, so I went to Lake Central and junior and senior year. I don't I actually don't think senior year. I went to the career center, um, in Hammond and I went for construction technology. So, um, that program is like 95% carpentry. Um, and I was actually pretty good at it. So I kind of had my mindset on that, but I still didn't know what trade I wanted to go into. I know, or I did know that I wanted to go into trade, but it was just kind of hard. It's always kind of hard, like finding out what you want to do and stuff. Um, and I, like, I knew about iron workers, but, um, you know, they never, you know, it was, it was kind of coincidence cause they started taking applications my senior year. Um, they do take applications every year, but not this year. So I applied, um, and I actually got in right out of high school. So I graduated high school on um, June 2nd of 2019, and then June 3rd of 2019 was my first day of school. So were, were you 17 years old when you applied, or were you 18 at the time? I was 18 when I applied. Okay. Hey, Rich, can you can you apply when you're 17? You can apply when you're 17, as long as you're a senior, uh, you, yes, you can apply. Okay, can you can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, the application process, Micah, and, and you know, how your experiences were? What, I mean, uh, what did you think about the aptitude test? Was it easy, hard? I mean, what, what would you say? Um, so, well, first, like first I applied, so applications, you had to come to the school in Lake Station to apply, and it was $10, um, just a $10 application. And then they had you find three references, um, three valid references that aren't family. So I, ha I had three valid references. Um, and then, so you about a month or two later after the application, you, um, so you had your references and then you went to take the test and then you turned in your references at the same time you took the test. And the test is kind of, I think it's like eighth grade math or something, pre-algebra. And I thought it was actually pretty easy. Um, also, you know, I was in high school at the time, so I'm pretty sharp at math. Like yeah, everything was pretty fresh stuff. in your head, huh? Yeah, like some of my classmates, like one of my classmates is 36. So he hasn't been in high school for like, you know, 18 longer than I've been alive. So he had, he said he had a little trouble on the test because, you know, he had to brush up a little. But I thought the test was relatively easy, especially if you're coming right out of high school. So how about the interview process? Was that pretty intimidating to go through? I mean, it sounds like you're in, interviewing in front of, uh, what, about six different people? Um, well, actually, uh, 
I'm pretty sure that it's only two different people. So there's six people on the board, but you interview and it's, there's still two big people. So you interview in front of the president of the union or of the local, and then you interview in front of, in front of the business manager of the local. So um, it was, I mean, it was relatively not a bad interview. Uh, I would recommend for like any interview in the trades, I wrote this down, show up like 15, 20 minutes early. And I would recommend recommend wearing like jeans and khaki, jeans or khakis and a flannel. I think is good. So that's what I wore. So and I got in, so it must've worked. <laughs> well, thanks for that advice. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, you know, what did you wear? Cause I'm sure a lot of a lot of students might be wondering, you know, what do, what do I wear to an interview to be an iron worker? Yeah. Um, so now, now that you've completed your first year and you're into your second year, um, what, what's one of your favorite aspects about being an iron worker? Um, so a couple of my favorite things are number one, um, iron workers, mostly any union, but iron workers, especially is a brotherhood, um, or a sisterhood. If, if you're a girl, um, you're really close with, uh, the people that you work with, like, um, like you like other apprentices, uh, you go out to eat with them. Uh, some of them will be like your best friend. Some of them will be in your wedding. Um, so you are really close. Uh, you all, you know, keep each other's back and stuff. Uh, and then I also enjoy it. So, I mean, it's like, it's kind of tough the to work to be honest, but, um, I enjoy it. And then, um, and then one more thing is, uh, there's a lot of pride in our trade and, it's kind of it's kind of good feeling like after you build something after you finish a job to walk off and you know you have pride that you built it and you built it well you know absolutely i, I used to work at superior construction which is um uh, yeah a bridge builder and yeah i mean it seems like every time that job finished i mean every time you go by that project or over that bridge you always kind of think of the time that you know you were there on that project so that I, I understand what you're yeah saying. absolutely you pride in the work that you did um so how about some of the challenges that you faced while becoming an iron worker? Are there any challenges that uh, uh, you, you didn't expect? Uh, yeah, there's actually a couple. So um, number one, I would say is uh, in construction, there's jobs. So like, it's not just one consistent 40 hour, Rich kind of talked about this. It's not just one 40 hour a week. Um, there's, a, there's jobs in construction and then every job has the start date and an end date. So maybe th sometimes that's the same day, maybe sometimes it's six months, but um, the work is just a little inconsistent. So like you can, you know, bust your butt for, you know, five months, six months out of the year. And then, you know, you could be laid off for like a month. So um, just the inconsistent paycheck. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a nice paycheck sometimes, but, you know, not having that steady cash flow every week um, is something that you have to get used to for sure. Um, and then uh, number two is just kind of being apprentice in general. So um, like on the job, like you're the lowest of the low, you know, just like starting out at any other company in any other career, um, you're kind of low on the totem pole. So you're not really welding or cutting, you know, to start um, or, doing any of the actual skills you're learning the skills but you're you know under a journeyman or a foreman and you're kind of helping them to complete the task while also completing the task and then um so like another challenge is like say you're on nights um you still have to come to school not not for it you don't have to come to school for eight hours but it's like oh i just worked a 12 hour night now i gotta go to school for five more hours so those are just a couple um I'm sure there's some other ones, but those are yeah. those are the main ones for me. So, so you talked, you know, just the um, camaraderie on the job site. Uh, you know, how has your mentors been with you? You know, kind of showing you what you need to do in the field. If, if you had a uh, good support network around you while working for the contractors. Um. Yeah. So you actually learn a lot more on the field than you do at school. I feel like. I mean, I'm learning at school, but you know, I'm getting used to knowing the skills, you know, out in the field and, you know, there's different tricks of the trade, um, for each different skill. So it's definitely helped me out a lot more on the field than, you know, probably about, I'd say 60 or 70% of what you learn is out on the field. So 
So are you currently working right now, Micah? Uh, so I worked. I worked last week, and I'm I'm laid off this week. So I got a job starting. I think I think a one or two day job Monday. So. So um, so since you're at the school, um, where are you at in the school right now? Can you uh, can you kind of show us around with your. Uh, with your notebook and kind of take a little tour through the uh, Ironworker Apprenticeship School? Uh, yeah, so this is, so here, this is the rebar shop. Um, sorry, I might be moving too fast. No, but good. this is uh, basically where you spend a lot of time in your first year. Um, so these are oxygen and we don't use acetylene, we use propylene bottles. Um, so that's kind of like the first skill that you want to learn as an apprentice is how to cut because that's one that you might actually use on the job site. So you're using a gas um, and a torch to cut through iron? Yeah, so it's actually pretty cool. For those of you who don't know, you could actually, so this is a piece of one inch steel. You could actually use fire to cut through. It's actually a pretty cool process. Um, and then we have rebar. So that's kind of one of the skills, one of the harder skills you want to learn in terms of physical, um, but it does make you a lot of money. And then um, I'll take you to the weld shop since um, the people in the weld shop are on coffee. We have coffee. We have two breaks here at school. We have um, coffee in the morning and then lunch. And then, um, yeah, it's pretty nice. So I'll just uh, take you over to the weld shop. So um, this is our weld shop. Uh, I think there's like 28 or 32 booths total. Most of it is uh, shielded metal arc welding or stick welding. And then like over here, we have flux core and stuff. So, um, I mean, it's pretty nice. Like here, I'll come show you my booth. Um, so you, you got your own welder for your booth. And then um, this is my coupon. So... For us, we kind of just lay welds. That's how we practice welding is we just weld over each weld and then it builds up. And then this is my coupon. I'm getting pretty good at vertical. Um, still need some work though. Have so, you practice like welding uh, overhead or anything like that too or? Um, so for us, we start out like pretty basic on like horizontal. So, <clears throat> so the coupon's just laying on the table and then then the horizontal and then vertical, which is the hardest. And then um, after that, you would move on to overhead. So, yeah. So, so did you have any welding experience prior to joining in the ironworkers? I had absolutely no ironworking experience before getting into ironworkers. Um, no, I did not know very much about uh, welding or cutting or, you know, anything. So, I, Mike, I just saw your vertical weld and it looked pretty it looked <laughs> So. Yeah, we got some pretty good teachers here. So, yeah. Hey, uh, one, one last question before I go back to Rich. Um, um, so, I mean, you were you were in high school just what you know two years ago. Yeah. Uh, what would you give? Uh, what kind of advice would you give to your younger self? Um, you know, or somebody else in high school that might be thinking about applying for the iron workers or, or any trade for that for that man. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. For those of you in high school, um, I have a couple things. So number one is have good attendance. So um, that's kind of one of the things that they, they're looking for on your transcript. So if you're showing up to school every day and if you're showing up to school on time. Um, so that's, that's one of the big things out here in construction is you want to show up every day and you want to show up on time. So like, you know, if, if I'm a general foreman and I have to choose between, you know, two guys, and one of them showing up to work every day and he's on time. And then the other one, you know, um, he's showing up like, you know, 15 minutes late, 10 minutes late every day. And, um, you know, maybe he doesn't, maybe he misses one or two days a week. Then I'm going to pick the guy that's showing up. So I would say have a good attendance um, in school, even though like it might be your senior year and you're sick of it. Uh, I would just drag it out and show up every day. Um, number two is um, finish out well, finish out high school well, like English English and math and science, I would say you would all need. So um, try to just figure out those practical, practical skills of learning. 
And then um, the last one is it might be a little hard, like getting into a trade or being in a trade at some times, but don't get discouraged. You know, um, some of your other friends might be going to school, going to college, which isn't a bad thing, but they're going to college and they're going to come out with 50 or 60 grand in debt and you're getting a paycheck. So um, it, it will be hard. I guarantee it, but just don't get, don't get discouraged. So that's all I have to say. Well, Micah, you have a bright future ahead of uh, ahead of you. So, thanks for joining us today, and I wish you luck in in the uh, you know the rest of your apprenticeship and in your life as uh, being an iron worker. I appreciate it. Hey, Rich, I'm gonna go back to you real quick. Uh, you know, Micah was talking about you know the brotherhood and the uh, camaraderie, but he also mentioned sisterhood, and and I kind of want to you know hit on that point a little bit. Is you know the trades kind of suffer from you know, lack of women participation. And, um, you know, um, I don't think uh, they realize, you know, you know, a lot of women realize what kind of opportunities exist in the trade and that it's equal opportunity. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, how, uh, you know, diversity uh, in the construction industry helps to improve the industry? Sure. Um, I think you're absolutely right. It does improve the construction industry. Uh, we'd love to see all types of people apply. Um, unfortunately, as you said, we just we, we have a lack of uh, females that even apply. Uh, I'd like to encourage anybody that th thinks that they're interested to come on in and apply. Um, one thing you, you must know though, you know, construction, no matter what trade it is, it's a physical job. So if you like physical work, come on in and apply because we'd love to have you. Well, you'll stay in shape, that's for sure. Uh, real quick, I'm going to um, share my screen real quick, and I'm going to go to the We Build uh, Northwest Indiana website. Uh, this is a website that uh, we have helped created with the trades. Can everybody see this? Can you see it, Rich? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, to find out more information on the iron workers, I, uh, you could go directly to their website, but you could also find it here through the We Build website, and uh, it'll talk about why you might want to consider a career in the construction. But one of the things uh, where all the information is, or one of the helpful links is uh, this uh, trade careers. And if you look over here, here's a list of all the trades that exist. Now, if you click on iron workers, um, it talks about, you know, what an iron worker is and the apprenticeship length and whether it's eligible for that degree from Ivy Tech, which the iron workers do offer, where to apply. Um, but there's also this link right here that'll take you to their website. So if you go to their website, it talks about their uh, apprenticeship you know, when to apply, how to apply, general qualifications. So I just kind of wanted to make that available to everybody out there. Um, is there anything else uh, that I should be mentioning about the website, Rich? Is there anything you want to talk about specifically? No, I think you pretty much covered it, Kev. Okay, so um, um, I think that's about all the questions I have. I don't really see any, hold on, I got two chat questions. So let me see here. Um, looks like we already answered those, so I'm not, I'm not even going to go into them. So that is basically all I have today. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, some more contact information up on the screen. Yeah, I can't get the screen <laughs> to shrink a little bit. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Here's some further information on the uh, iron workers. I don't know if it's sharing my screen and everything's kind of frozen on me. So I apologize about that. And I can't even escape out of this or anything. So uh, if you have any questions though, uh, you could go to uh, uh, ironworkers395.com. Um, or like I said, you could visit the We Build Northwest Indiana website, which is available at www.webuildnwi.com. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Micah, for joining us. Thanks for having us.